an informal guy. What's going on, Billy? Hello, Billy. Billy, uh, you met we we met the other night, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, the man of the hour, the guy responsible for what's going on here this week, the legendary Texas Motorplex. We'll Thank trade, you so we'll much for uh, taking the time to be here, brother. Billy Meyer, what's uh, we got a car getting ready to roll into the water box, I believe, so we may let this burnout crack off. I see uh, Richard Freeman standing down there, looking intense. Nope. How far back are we? Is that a top alcohol car? Oh, Randy Meyer. This thing will probably go an imitation, 508. An imitation Meyer. <laughs> so true. Let's get this thing. These A fuel cars ain't that bad. We'll be able to talk. I, I, that's my th the worst part about A fuel drag racing short burnouts. I can't stand it, Billy. I can't stand it. You are the quintessential drag racing showman, Billy Meyer. You've set the bar for many, many years. We were talking, Mike and I were talking earlier at the show. This is a guy that's responsible for what we believe to be drag racing's first real super track. Uh, your commitment to our sport has been incredible to see. I think we're all better and lucky that we have someone like you that's willing to invest the time and energy to, to take our sport to this level. When you look out here after all these years, to see you still innovating, Billy, with the Texas Stampede of Speed. And I know you've got a lot of people involved, your yeah. daughter, Christy, Andy. I know there's a lot of people you've got to mention. But I do believe you you deserve the limelight and you deserve the spotlight because they're serving a vision that you set out, you, that you set before them many years ago. What's this event, this nine-day festival, what's this mean to you right now, this moment in time? Uh, means not enough sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it, man. I mean, what's it been like getting to this point, to be honest, well, Billy? Because well, I'm sure this was a multi-month year planning type of deal. Actually, actually, uh, we thought we were going to be able to do this two years ago. And, and through all the stuff that we accomplished through the state with them, finally getting them convinced in Congress passing. Get, getting the state Congress to pass a bill to make us equal to the Super Bowl or the Final Four you know, uh, or the Formula One race that, that kinda, it got that bill got blocked two years ago. So we wow. actually uh, lost two years on, on this project. Uh, and uh, so, so it, it, it is the good news is Barry and Christy and, and Andy have grown during that two year period. So when we got down to it and got that accomplished, it was it was probably easier to pull off than, than we thought. I don't I, I'm going to talk a little bit out my hind end here because I don't know all the ins and out, but I want to fill in the viewers, the people that are tuning in, around, tuning in from around the world. Basically, yourself, the entire team at the Texas Motorplex worked with Governor Abbott down here in Texas uh, to, as you said, have this event, the Texas Stampede of Speed and the NHRA Fall Nationals treated like the Super Bowl, treated like a Formula One event for its value, for what it brings to the state of Texas and this community and in, in uh, specifically can you tell us what's that process even i can't even imagine and i wonder how many track operators around the country is that even on their radar to like go after the the tourism board or to get the state involved well and, you know it doesn't cost the state any money it's sales tax reimbursement fund is what it is it's called major event reimbursement program the merp and so what they're trying to do is they're trying to help which in a lot of states you don't see this right they're actually trying to help companies grow their you know, and also increase the sales tax and, and also people coming to Texas. So it has so much to do with, with out of state people. And as you know, drag racing has got a gazillion out of state people uh, because we don't have a national event on every corner and sure don't have a countdown race on every corner. So it has to be an event that's only one of a kind. Okay. So it couldn't be another national event in Texas, right? I mean, this one's in the countdown uh, and, and which puts us in that, in that uh, stratosphere, that formula. And so it, it's a blessing that that, that uh, all the congressmen and the senators have been here. They saw the value of what it was going to do. And, and Governor Abbott you know, so graciously signed the bill when they passed it. And so, you know, that's that's given us the opportunity to make this thing even a bigger event. And and that's why when you see Circuit of Americas, you know, when they have a Formula One race, it's eight days long. I mean, you know, because they're trying to make it a bigger event for, for the city of Austin. It's incredible to see, and the thing that I believe it's happening today, I may, it maybe has already happened, but you guys are having like a mixer, I think this afternoon for like local business owners. We, we've talked about this many times, Mike and I right here on the show, that it always kind of, I mean, let's be honest, it chaps my ass a little bit when I roll into a city and the restaurant owners don't know there's a drag race in town. The hotel people don't know there's a drag race in town. And I go, 
man, what a missed opportunity. And I mean, kudos to you guys. You're bringing all these guys out here, going to feed and drink them a little bit and well, see how we can help each other. Well, we actually did that last night. Okay. Uh, but tonight in downtown Waxahachie it, it is, a, is a kind of a fan fest, a kind of an event. But mainly what it is, it, it is a meet and greet. And they have a big amphitheater downtown oh, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. The movie. And, and so we're playing the Don Perdome, Tom McHugh movie. And, and Don Snake's going to be here. And he and I will be at both at that thing signing autographs. And and so uh, it's kind of just bringing the city involved. But we had we did this, that, that bull stampede thing in downtown, walks at you the other day. And we had two people at the mixer last night come up and tell us how their business was three times larger Friday than any other Friday they've ever had. Just because there's happens to be thousands of people down there, right? And so we're trying to grow everybody's business and, and 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 try to make this more entertaining, not just cars going up and down a drag strip. I mean, I just think it, you guys give this guy a round of applause. I mean, I don't know that people truly understand the difference that that type of thing can make. It's a little bit of outreach. It's not super hard to buy a little bit of beer or whatever and bring these folks out, but to make them feel like they're part of this and be invested in it, I mean, you'll be reaping the benefit of that effort for years to come. Yeah, as will the community. You know, and if you remember back in the 90s, we did this in the West End in Dallas, but we're not in Dallas, right? But but it was huge down there. But the problem is other tracks started trying to copy it, and then teams got tired of going to having to do a West End festival every track. And so this this has worked out really good. we got a, got a lot of good teams coming down there. Uh, and then Thursday night is the actual Fan Fest, where there will be probably tons and tons of race cars there, show cars mainly, you know, that – Look like they're race cars. I heard and 30 or 40 pro drivers are coming. They are coming, yeah. And obviously with the state thing, we were able to increase the purse. It's the largest purse, I think, in history this weekend for a single event. Uh, you know, when you when you add in all the extra money that we tied into the thing. So I, I know maybe the years when they had the Big Bud shootout and, 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 and the other shootout, if they want to combine those in, there's maybe bigger, but but they're different events. And, and so, But from one single event, I think this is going to be uh, – and the race teams have bought into what we're doing. Uh, and they see that we're trying uh, to, to help them. Uh, you know, obviously a greedy motive is we're trying to help ourselves. No, you know, but, but, no, I mean, but hell, I'm going to start crying. I mean, I just, it's, it cannot be overstated, Billy. Like paying these guys to show up, you know what I mean? Giving them some tow money. Now, granted, there's some expectations. Hey, we need you to come out here and make some representative runs. We can't have you sit out. But I mean, I'm personally of the opinion that a top fuel drag racer, a funny car drag racer, a pro stock drag racer, I mean, these guys deserve that treatment. They deserve to get a little bit of, you know, some bread, butter on their bread just for rolling through the gates. And you guys being willing to do that, throw a carrot out there for the low qualifying on Friday night. It's fantastic. You know, and we did that years ago where we had Friday night qualifying and it was 20,000 below ET Friday night. And then they quit wanting to do Friday night qualifying. Uh, so, so, but we used to have the Dr. Pepper shootout on Friday night and the big bud night on sh you know, Friday night. So we've done it before. We've just never been able to do it this way, but it's one of those kind of things when you get blessed uh, with the, with the, with the ability of what we've gotten accomplished, you know, we're, you know, NHRA is making more money than they've ever made. Uh, the racers are going to make more money than they've ever made. Uh, you know, obviously the suites are nicer than they've ever been, you know, so, so, you know, it, it, you don't get very far if you just try to be greedy and keep it all. Well, take us through that. And I think truer words have maybe never been spoken. I think it, what you get what you give, right? And it, it will come back around. And I think the sport of drag racing is going to rally around this. I really, Mike and I on the in the tower, well, excuse me, down on the starting line Monday night, watching that whole situation unfold with Scott Palmer's Nitro uh, sideshow, two top fuel cars come out here. Like, it, it felt like I was at some sort of underground happening. You know what I mean? It just felt significant. He goes 305 in the eighth mile. This place... And it was just the whole situation. And I looked at Mike and I said, man, I get goosebumps. Look, my hair's, I'm sorry, the drinking game that everybody plays about me getting goosebumps. But it, 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 I, can't, I can't say it enough. You feel something, something's happening right here. Well, and, and if, obviously that, that was an awesome deal Monday night, you know, and what he, he was able to pull off uh, in, in pretty short period of time, actually. You know, but, but if, you look, if you look at what it'll grow to, I think it'll be spectacular. But, but if you just go back to see when you just go back to Sunday night, you know, we had just under 30,000 people here Sunday night uh, for a Lantern Fest uh, deal and, 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 and Dustin Lynch and, and Flatland and Wade Bowen and Kyle Parks. And, and we had a bull riding contest. You know, nobody really has ever had a bull riding How contest. How important do you think 
introducing those other types of, of entertainment is to the growth of this event. Because obviously the hardcores, those diehard drag racers like me, we can't wait to see Scott Palmer run a Nitro Pro Mod. We're waiting for it all year. But to bring those people out like, you know, Dustin Lynch fans, to bring rodeo fans out here, how, how important is bringing those, those other folks, fresh faces, I guess, to the sport of drag racing out to the motorplex? Well, it's critical, number one. A, they get to know where it is, <laughs> which, which helps a lot. It's, tr it's simple. And, and number but true. two, you know, they, they get to see show cars out here and they see funny cars out here because we had a big, big group of cars here. Uh, you know, the next year we'll try to tie in, a, you know, where we start a top fuel car and, you know, do a burnout or do something just to get them more in tune to it. But, uh, and we already have bigger bands for next year signed already. You told uh, me that's crazy. So that's going to be pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of getting people introduced to the facility which then introduces them to the sport, which is why we're running for eight days. What do you make of this test session? I mean, what has the reaction been? Because I will tell you, I mean, I know you, you're one of the track promoters that so many of us model ourselves after. You're, you're involved with these people. You know them. You're on a first-name basis with them. I've seen you bouncing around, shaking hands in and out of all these different suites. You know how to do this deal well, at a high I, level. I, you have to remember I was one. Yeah, you, that's <laughs> such a unique perspective, honestly, in this day and age. I don't know that there's – I mean, a lot of times you look around the top of drag racing organizations, and this is just being honest, you know, you don't see a whole lot of guys that have been in a fire suit or have sat in between some chrome molly anytime soon, if ever. So that is a very valuable no, no, perspective and, for you. And, and actually, one of the, the, key, the key things, obviously, I'm not young anymore, but so I've been here since I was 16 in a funny car. So obviously, nobody's driven a funny car for 18 years, owned a sanctioning body, owned a TV production company, owned a magazine company, Drag Race Today, if you remember, you know, and owned a racetrack uh, and, and seen every angle of it and so and being the crew chief not only just the driver of the funny car so it it it, is, it brings a different perspective to me uh than probably anybody could have uh but it doesn't mean anybody can't do this better than us don't get me wrong but but it, it does help it us understand when somebody's upset about something or somebody's excited about something why you know because well i've been there <laughs> and so <laughs> I do tell you, I think this is an interesting thing because going back to what we were talking about a moment ago, you can sense the buy-in. Like, I, I think it's pretty easy to tell when you talk to somebody like, hey, do you understand what we're trying to do here? And if you walk through the pits, these guys get it. Yeah. They, they recognize that, hey, this is, this is a group of people collectively that are trying to do something significant for the sport of drag racing. I look down the road two, three years from now, Billy, I'm not being, I'm not blowing smoke. I think this is going to be U.S. national. This is going to be maybe more so. Honestly, I mean, we hear all the time, like nothing against the NHRA U.S. Nationals. I believe the magic is still there. I believe it's the granddaddy of them all. But the level of pomp and circumstance, the production, the belt buckles. I mean, it was such a cool moment for me last night to get to hand that belt buckle to John Baker. And thank you for letting me present that award. But like all that extra thought in the, the stamped logo there in the center of the track, all that attention to detail, I really believe it makes all the difference in the world. And these, they get it. They're on board. And, and that's not me, by the way. <laughs> uh, so so uh, obviously that's Christy, my daughter, and, and uh, Barry, my son-in-law, and, and Mike Woodard and Andy, our, our general manager, I mean, that, that, and Terry and Ben. And I mean, there's just a collection of guys there that actually think out of the box. Uh, and since they know I've never been in a box, so, so they, they know it's easy to, to convince me of things. Well, I think it's an incredible thing, and I appreciate you taking the time to be here with us. I don't know. We got uh, daughter Christy in the house. We'll we'll do we'll swap out here in a few minutes. I got a couple more things. What kind of feedback are you getting from like other racetrack owners? I mean, I don't know what kind of relationship you have. Are people? I mean, are you Al and I Tucci? You know, you had us on the microphone last night. Thank you for that. Al and I were getting text. I mean, we we posted a video on the Drag Illustrated YouTube channel of that big grudge race on Monday night for over a hundred thousand dollars and the lights and the smoke and the pyro. People are losing their mind. Are you hearing from other people about like, hey man, you guys are onto something? No, I mean, you know, times have changed in in our ownership uh, of, of tracks, right? So so the guys that I grew up with in the thirty five years of track ownership, most of them are gone. Uh, have, you know. But, the Bandemir family is the closest family we have in drag racing. Incredible people. You know, and the Angel brothers are leaving, you know, so they're not calling and right. texting, you know. But other than those two guys, you know, there's not anybody that, that we still, you know, had the history with, like really? Vinny Knapp at English Town and places like that, you know, where we're friends with them. You know, I'm not real close with the Baders, even though they are kind of like us and that they, they try to, you know, 
go outside the envelope. They do. I mean, it's. I mean, just to be honest, we're hearing about it from sea to shining sea. We're getting texts, the comments that we're seeing on social media. People are going, man, I'm going to have to. I mean, we actually had a guy comment earlier, like next year I'm coming from England. You know, and I think that that's what you guys are doing here. So thank you, truly, from that, the bottom of my heart. That's the guy the state wants here because that's out of state money coming in to spend money. In yes, the state. sir. And that's the whole goal of the Merp is to bring out of state dollars into the state and spend them on sales tax in the state. And, and, that, and that's their whole goal is because we can all swap dollars. If we live here and we don't gain anything. It just moves from one guy's hand to the other. But when we bring out a state money here, that, that that's what they're trying to accomplish. What's the pass fail on this deal? I mean, for you this weekend, when you look at the whole thing, a, a safe race, I mean, what, I mean, obviously I know you guys are committed to the long haul, but do you have any like goals personally that you'd share with us as what you want to see happen this week? Well, obviously the number one goal you always want is no weather, right? Uh, so far, that looks like it's a blessing. Uh, and so these events are a whole lot easier to put on when, when you have that. And number two, obviously, we want it to be safe, right? And, and number three, we want it to be exciting. We don't want it to be a typical drag race. I mean, we, we want to be able to have the drivers get suited up on the starting line and talking to each other. We want to play music while they're doing it. I mean, we, we want entertainment uh, for the fans. Fans came here not to see a car every 18 seconds go down the racetrack. They came here to just like they go that that's if they wanted to see a golf ball go down, you could go to any hole on a pro event and, and watch somebody hit a golf ball. But if you want to see Don Verdome and, and excuse me, if you want to see uh, Tiger Woods and, and, you know, and Dustin Johnson, those, you know, it's entertainment. There's going to be a lot. Reason there's a reason why there's 50,000 people around those guys, around Phil Mickelson, because it's entertainment. It's not just seeing a golf ball go to the hole. And this is not just seeing a race car go down the racetrack. It's, it's getting to know a little bit about them. That's why certain guys' Facebook pages, you know, have 100,000 people and the other one has 2,000 people, right? Because one of them is more provocative in what he says and, and just, and it doesn't matter what sport it is. I mean, Tom Brady's got a gazillion followers, right? And, and so it, 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 we're trying to get the people to know the racers better and, and make it where, where they can commu feel and have more understanding of what it's all about to climb in a car and go 330 mile an hour. From your mouth to God's ears, Billy. I mean, I'll tell you what, that's been our mission at Drag Illustrated Magazine for 16 years is we've always felt that we, someone has to put faces to the names on the windows, right? And it's it's so important because it's it's physically, it's impossible to create a real emotional connection to a piece of machinery. You People relate to other people. And I think that whenever that they have the opportunity to let people get to know them a little bit, hear how they sound, hear the way they talk, uh, hear the way they behave themselves, that's the ultimate different, difference maker. And Billy, I just want to thank you, seriously. Sure. For uh, for your investment, your commitment to the sport of drag racing all these years, it's uh, it's been incredible to see. It's a real blessing, a pinch me moment for all of us to be here in the tower that, that Billy Meyer built. And uh, I appreciate what you're doing for the sport of drag racing. Thank you so appreciate much, it. brother. It's going to be a great weekend. It is. Thank you so much. Incredible, JT. Are you still on here? The stampede of speed. That's exactly right. Texas Motorplex. Uh, JT, did you hear I all am. that? Did you catch that? I You're did. probably a lot smarter than you were 20 minutes ago. I am. Do you feel that way? I, you should. I love learning. I tell you what, and there's actually a great <laughs> question here, and I'm going to ask Billy. I'm He's off famous. here. Billy, I'm getting some comments. They're asking, and maybe Christy knows, uh, are all the lights and all that, the smoke show and all that, or can we expect that during the national event Friday night? Oh, that's gonna be bananas! That's awesome. It's gonna, it, so I think it's what the, the sport the, needs the so bad, that? man. Is the DJ running the uh, the, the flames and the pyro and all that? You because know what? Let me ask Christy because Christy noticed, might know. I noticed last night that it was uh, you know, like it was going with the beat of the uh, of the sound. I, I don't know. It was just awesome. I was wondering, it. Christy, uh, JT, our co-host here on the West Buck Show, and ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up, everybody! Round of applause, Christy Meyer. <laughs> Uh, Christy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the cheesecake last You're night. Welcome. I put out a call out, JT. I put a call out on the, you know, a lot of times you hear a call out from the tower, you hear Tucci's bo booming voice, voice and oh, they're yeah. looking for a nine inch ring gear, <laughs> right? Or they're looking yep. for a, a 33 spine axle. But I put out a call out. I said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I have your attention? We need cheesecake to the tower cheesecake to the tower. And a few minutes later, here comes Christy Meyer with a plate. There was one of oh, them that was God. green. It took us about 20 minutes to decide to eat it. I think it was key lime pie. Is that I'm right? I'm not sure. That's what I was guessing, but I'm not, I can't promise. I told you I, there's four flavors. I don't know what they are. <laughs> I, I took if, a bite and I go, do please don't be pistachio. That's, you can do that with beer. Uh, yeah. I'm there. 
you know, like, no. okay. <laughs> it was incredible. Well, hey, one of the questions that we were getting in the comments is, so who's running all that pyro stuff? And get up on this mic. Sure. We have a production team that we brought in. Um, so they're like hitting buttons. They are, yes. Okay. So it's all timed out. We have a team. We have a meeting every day. And we just go through our schedule and figure out, you know, what we're going to do that night to make it crazy and wild and something that people have never seen before. Well, and it has been. I was lucky enough to actually be involved in one of the, your production meetings last night. Andy Carter had the whole gang around the table. And I actually text my wife and I said, holy shit, like this is the most intense meeting I've ever <laughs> been in. Like I've been around the block a little bit, but they were like, they're moving stuff around on the schedule and when we're going to do this and when we're going to do that. And hey, no, 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 we don't need, we need to wait till the end to do that. And it was really incredible. Where does that attention to detail Really, I mean, it has to start somewhere, Christy. Does it start with you and your father and trickle down? I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, my dad is a very attention, I mean, detail person. I mean, at, today he's been walking around sending me texts of all the things he wants me to fix before tomorrow. So this is what he does is he comes in and, you know, he's got that eye for detail. And I, unfortunately, have taken that as well. I'm a perfectionist. and But then Andy, coming from the rodeo scene, I mean, yes. he is extremely... Um, detail oriented and he wants to put on a show he's a you know he's in the entertainment business and I think that's what we're all trying to accomplish here is to put on a good show for people so I think it I think it's a product of our entire team it's impressive to see because honestly I've told people this week like I think you guys put in like 170 some new bathrooms or something like that we did we we have originally when my dad built the track in 86 he was so proud that he had more bathrooms than Texas Stadium so he went and counted every single bathroom stall <laughs> And he wanted to have more than Jerry Jones. So we have a lot of bathrooms here at the Tex Metroplex. And all of them are brand new from the suites down to the outdoor bathroom. So everybody, you know, I hope people can enjoy that. We well, I tell you what, I think drag strips kind of get ranked a little bit. Same way gas stations get. They get ranked by how the bathrooms are kept. I, I mean, I, I, agree. I, I think it's very important. And I got to tell you, I told my wife, I said, hey, they can keep 175 of these things clean. I need you to step your game up. We've got, mean, we got three of them. You know what I mean? But seriously, though, I hope everybody recognizes yeah. the effort it takes because I say that tongue in cheek, but it, you know, most of us have a hard time keeping, you know, I see Scotty and Clay Milliken in here. I mean, just keeping your rig clean, keeping your stuff up, up to snuff is a challenge, keeping your house clean, but to keep a facility like this looking like you guys have it. I mean, we've got it like 66 degrees in here. You could pretty much hang meat. I mean, yeah. 400 megabit per second internet in a, at a drag strip. I mean, it's really incredible, and I hope that you walk around like with your, your head held high and your chest stuck out because this is an incredible thing that you guys are doing here. Thank you. We appreciate that. I mean, it's been a lot of work. I mean, so we, the entire sweet tower, for, I mean, it froze in the winter storm of Texas, you know, our stormageddon, snowmageddon, you call it, and we're not used to that weather. And oh. so, I mean, in some ways, it was a you know blessing in disguise to be able to have the opportunity to remodel all of these things and to bring in brand new air conditioning units and I mean, we've updated almost every inch of this facility from pavement to bathrooms to, you know, AC units to TVs and media. So, I mean, we're very fortunate. And I, a lot of people have struggled in these last two years, and we've been very fortunate to be able to run and to be open and to be able to grow and expand our business. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity. So this is a really incredible couple of weeks for you. And I don't know if this was like planned, but we obviously had the NHRA 37th annual fall nationals, uh, the Texas stampede of speed this week, long festival next week, you have the street outlaws, no prep Kings. I mean, this is a burn burner of a couple of weeks. How significant for you guys, like over the course of a year are these two weekends? Is this the, these two weekends likely make or break a season for a track owner? In a lot of ways. Yes. And we've been very fortunate fortunate to bring in some other large events throughout the year. Um, so that's been exciting to do new things that are outside of drag racing from music festivals and, you know, other things like car shows, things like that. But these two weeks are, are most important. There's no doubt. I mean, this week is historical for us. I mean, it's what, you know, put us on the map. So it's very, I mean, to me, it, you know, I've been to every single one. I've never missed a race, you know. So it's really important that we just do it well and we do it with integrity and we just, you know, give the fans something to be excited about. I, I told this to your dad a few minutes ago, and I mean it. You can sense that there's some there's some special energy here. Like even on, I mean, I wasn't here Sunday night, and I actually kind of hate that I missed yeah. it now because Elon told me to come and I didn't. But I mean, the, between the country music concert, all the the photos, I don't know if JT can throw that into the comments. That photo of all those lanterns floating through the sky on Sunday night. The show Monday was unbelievable. Last night's show was unbelievable. It's hard to believe. I mean, we've been here for three days, but I want to stay for like three more weeks. Yeah. I mean, that's, the, I mean, I know you don't, but uh, well, I mean, it's been incredible to watch. What's, what, where do you see, I mean, obviously you're telling me about your dad telling you things that he wants to fix. I mean, are there any things that, that you still have yet to add to this for the future? We do. We have a five-year plan. 
So our goal is to continue to expand and to provide other things for people, whether it's an RV park or whether it's, I don't know, Andy threw out the other day a water park. And I was like, what did you just say? But I don't know. (laughs) But, you know, we do have, we have some exciting things in our, you know, arsenal that we are trying to provide in the next five years. So, you know, we're one step at a time and we're just trying to, you know, do our best with everything we do and provide an opportunity for people to come have fun and to, you know, our goal is to bring new fans in. That's the whole purpose of so many of these promotional events this week is bringing new fans to the track that have never experienced it before. It's, it's been an incredible thing to see. We have a lot of like track operators and race promoters that watch this show and listen to the podcast, download it on iTunes. If you're not a subscriber, I encourage you to do so. Log on to dragillustrated.com or check out our channel on YouTube and hit subscribe, click share, help us spread the gospel of drag racing. It makes a huge difference. And I thank each and every one of you that do it. When you look at this whole deal in the scene, what inspires you to put on events like this? I mean, how did you I mean, how do you even arrive at the notion that, hey, we need to go from doing a standard national event that, to your point, you've been doing for 36 years or whatever, you've never missed one. What was the catalyst to go, hey, we need to take this from a Friday, Saturday, Sunday deal to a week plus long deal? Or was it an opportunity with the, with the state of Texas that you guys saw? I think it was both. I mean, I think we've just gotten tired of just the same show every single year. And I mean, no offense to no. that at all, but you know, every year it's the same thing. Every single Friday, we did the same thing every Sunday morning. The you know, opening ceremonies is the exact same thing. So I, I think, you know, people get tired of seeing the same show everywhere you go. So what we've noticed with our ticket is a lot of people come every other year because they don't want to see the same show every year. So sorry, no, we want those people to come every year. So if we can pivot and do things, you know, friends pivot, you know, if we can do new things, then hopefully people come every year. So that was part of it. But then also the opportunity with the state, the fact that we have gotten, you know, the attention of the state to, to realize that we are, you know, on the same playing field as so many of these other sports has been very huge for us. So, you know, having this new MERP, um, grant that we're involved with has been huge and we realized i mean we need to make it as big as we can and to bring more people in and like my dad was talking earlier bringing out of state people to i mean benefits this community and it reaches on into dfw so you know that i think it's a twofold you know we're real fortunate to have both it's for me i think it's important for people to hear that because i don't know that i mean a i hadn't even considered the notion that you know some people skip a year right or maybe don't come back because it's a little bit of a rinse and repeat thing so there's some some real pressure there to figure out hey how can we reinvent this deal it's uh what when you look around at the landscape of stick and ball sports uh pro bowl riding you talked about andy carter the general manager here at the motorplex having a history in in he's a circle track guy he has a history in rodeo where do you look for inspiration when it comes to putting on these events that's kind of a hard question i mean i guess i mean my personality a little bit i like to just do new things and surprise people. And I like to, if you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to figure out how to do it. So, but I think, you know, just watching my dad be able to do these, like people told me he couldn't do it. And I've watched my entire life him just, you know, grab the bull by the horns and just do it. And he's softened over the years and, you know, he's been an incredible dad and he gave up drag racing for me and my brother. That makes me emotional, but he continued to stay in the sport and it's his first love. I mean, even though he's not involved to the extent that he once was like, when he got inducted to the Hall of Fame, it was one of the most emotional times for us because this is his love. So just watching my parents and everything that they've done in the family that we've created here with the employees and with the fans. I mean, I know these fans, like same people every year in the Champions Club, we have conversations. I know who their kids are. You know, it's really special to have these relationships with people that you get to see once a year from all over the country. You spoke about that guy from England. We do have one gentleman from England that's got to be in his 80s and he comes he didn't get to come last year because of COVID, but he has come every single year that I've worked here. And to be able to have these conversations with people from all over the world is incredible. How exciting is it for you to have the opportunity to carry on that tradition yeah. of outside of the box thinking over the top in every every aspect imaginable? I mean, it's got to feel good to be able to carry that on. And you can see uh, the glimmer in your dad's eye. I mean, I obviously don't know you guys that well just getting to know you, but like your dad's a living legend. But you can see like he was excited to get out of the way here in this interview so you could talk. I mean, what's, what's that feel like? I mean, it's been so cool to be able to work with my dad. I mean, I've been here 15 years and he started me selling t-shirts. I was a teacher and I always wanted to be a teacher because my mom was a teacher and quickly realized it wasn't what I wanted to do. And so he said, do you want to learn the business? And I was like, it never dawned on me my whole life to be involved in drag racing. So I came out here and he put me in the t-shirt booth and he said, you sell t-shirts. So I was 24, maybe 23. So I, you know, 
came and I was the t-shirt girl. I helped with some of the merchandising, but then I slowly over the last 15 years have worked my way up to, you know, co-owner with him. So it's been really neat to just learn every aspect. I've sold tickets. I've, you know, pretty much done everything here so I can, you know, just really be a part of the team and just say that I've done it. I mean, I'm not one of those people that wants to tell people what to do. I'm going to go do it and we can do it together. So I don't know. It's just been pretty incredible to have that opportunity with him. I've got to tell you, Christy, it's been incredible to watch. I mean, we recently, my family recently relocated from Northeast Missouri to the Dallas Fort Worth area. And I've told my wife, like I've waited my whole life to have a national event track in my backyard and to be able to burn over here and see what you guys have built uh, relatively frequently. It's incredible. I mean, literally from TJ on the starting line, yeah. Cheeseburger, the guys in the tower, the girls over there at race control. I mean, you can sense the camaraderie, you can sense the buy-in and the commitment from the whole group. And I, I hope you're as proud of yourself as you should be, Christy. And I appreciate you, uh, putting this on, inviting us in, letting us take over yeah. the conference conference room today. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate no it. No problem.